friends, it's Miss Sam again, and today we are going to be reading a book called Out of School and Into Nature, The Anna Comstock Story. And this book is written about a real live person. Her name was Anna Comstock. She was born in September of 1854, and she was a famous American artist, educator, conservationist, and leader of the nature study movement. Out of School and Into Nature, The Anna Comstock Story From the time she was no higher than a daisy, Anna was wild about nature. She loved to hold it close in her fingers. She wanted to feel it squish between her toes, which was why she ran barefoot all summer long raised slimy tadpoles into pet toads, and climbed tall trees instead of sitting in their shade. Sometimes Anna just sat, watching. One of my joys was going barefoot from early spring until late autumn. That's how she discovered nature's secrets. Leafy moths demonstrated the art of camouflage. Fuzzy bees showed her pollination. Marching ants explained all about teamwork. Through the years, Anna grew like a sunflower. So did her love of nature. Her mother taught her the names of wildflowers dancing in the meadow. At night, she whispered the names of the constellations twinkling in the velvety black sky. Back then, girls were supposed to get married after high school, but Anna's heart belonged to her first love, nature. So she took off for college to learn more of its secrets. Anna studied plants and insects she'd never seen before. Such thousands of insects I never saw before. The more she learned, the more she wanted to share her discoveries. So she began to draw, slowly, carefully. Her bugs looked so real, they almost crawled right off the paper. Amazed by her art, a professor started using her pictures in his lectures. Farmers studied detailed sketches to identify hungry bugs stealing their crops. Yet Anna dreamed of creating even more realistic pictures. So she started carving fine lines into a block of wood. When she rolled ink over her engraving and pressed paper on top, magic! A beautiful print appeared. Stink bug, mayfly, doodle bug. Each one was breathtaking. Anna was a fine artist, but she was a scientist, too. Peering through her microscope, she studied delicate wings, legs, and antennae to create her art. In her day, most people thought men belonged in science, not women. Anna thought they were as nutty as an oak tree, so she kept on researching and drawing. She created illustrations for an insect book so others could learn about these tiny creatures. In time, she became a nature expert. Then one day, Anna made a surprising discovery. While visiting nearby schools, she realized they didn't have any nature classes. In fact, most New York schools weren't teaching about nature. It seemed other subjects were more important, like reading, writing, and math. Anna knew this needed to change, and fast. So she decided to start by teaching the teachers. Anna grabbed her pen and wrote lessons about nature's marvelous mysteries. Caterpillars changing into graceful butterflies. Water freezing into six-sided snowflakes. Trees turning rain and sunlight into sweet sap. 
Her lessons captivated curious teachers. Soon, nature classes sprouted up in schools everywhere. But Anna believed children should experience nature too. They needed to hold it close in their fingers, feel it squish between their toes. Then nature itself could teach children. So Anna asked teachers to take their classes outside. People thought she was crazy. Didn't she know school rules? Students learn inside, students play outside. Determined, Anna didn't give up. She wanted children to become passionate about wildlife, to take care of the environment. Nature study cultivates in the child a love of the beautiful. Finally, several schools agreed. Notebooks in hand, students tromped through the forests and fields. Fascinated by the wonders around them, they stopped and sat, watching. That's how they discovered nature's secrets. Spiders spinning sticky webs, brown bats snoozing upside down, tadpoles sprouting stubby legs, and the children became wild about nature. News of Anna's outdoor study spread faster than dandelion seeds on a windy day. Soon, classes across New York, across the country, headed outside. Because Anna changed the rules, children realized how all living things are connected, unique, important, and they wanted to learn more. So Anna decided to create books about nature. Year after year she wrote, she drew, but she always made time for her first love, nature. Anna held it close in her fingers, felt it squish between her toes, until her very last days. The story of nature is never finished. There is not a weed or an insect or a tree so common that the child, by observing carefully, may not see things never yet recorded. Anna Comstock Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed learning about Anna Comstock and all the wonderful work she did learning and writing and drawing about insects and plants and nature. I hope you join us for our next story. Bye monkeys!